The world beyond university is just as rough as you've been told. And you face it on your own. There is, however, an alternative. An organisation which employs 16,000 Australians, operating tens of millions of dollars worth of leading edge equipment, with a history and tradition of looking after the men and women who staff it. An organisation serving and protecting Australia. The leaders who manage it are qualified specialists. Men and women who in many cases joined while still at university. They were on full pay while they studied for their degrees. They were paid to acquire the professional skills the Navy needs and values. The Navy paid their tuition fees for their books and equipment. Then the Navy taught them the traditions, the language and the method of operation on which it depends. High level management skills were a critical part of their training and with a continent to protect at home and represent abroad, they have carried real responsibility from the start. These men and women have earned the confidence that turns crisis management into an art form. Ships at sea with up to 400 people on board need to be virtually self-sufficient. The Navy needs a large support organization with elements based on both ship and shore. This is known as the Supply and Secretariat Branch. Supply officers are involved in a variety of general shipboard duties, such as helicopter control. Supervising a staff of up to 30, they are also responsible for stores support, pay, accounting, banking, catering, secretarial support and personnel management. Supply officers join as undergraduates or graduates majoring in any subject. The first stage of their naval training is a course held at HMAS Creswell, Jarvis Bay, New South Wales. Cabin F-27 for your inspection, sir. Midshipman Robinson reporting. Very good. That's good. Shoes are a bit polished. Torbone tells good, Mr. Robinson. Carry on. Sir. Hey! A second course is divided into three categories. The course covers divisional officers, officer of the day responsibilities, and the broad spectrum of naval operations. We're going to be going up to Richmond, flying from Richmond up to Townsville, where you'll be staying overnight. Ben, what's meant by rad hazards? Radio hazards. Zero to the ship, we're not permitted, sir. What happens if we get seasick, sir? If you get seasick, then you just go to see the sick bay. 921, you have a green deck, loose to track for Jarvis Bay, for wet witching operations, not above 200. 50 yards to run, line is good, height is good. 10 yards to run, 5 yards, line is good. 3, 2, 1, steady, survival is up the air. The end of this course does not mark the end of training in the art of leadership and management for the graduates. They have been given basic, almost survival skills, from which to develop their own style. The end of this course is the end of graduates' initial officer training. Project clear to transition. Rolling. On completion of the course, supply officers go to HMAS Cerberus at Western Port Victoria for their application course. The time spent at Cerberus is used to apply the junior officers to their specific branch. 
From Cerberus, they move on to their first position, which could be any ship or establishment in Australia. Here they specialise in project management and logistic support disciplines. There is a variety of positions within the supply branch and opportunities to serve overseas. I just left the Navy after 13 years. I joined the Naval College at the age of 16 and did my last two years of high school. From there I was selected for university and completed with a Bachelor of Commerce. Now I'm the operations manager for a major firm here in Sydney. I have people reporting to me from every state in Australia. The Navy taught me how to meet deadlines and how to deal with people. I really miss the structures and the support the Navy gave to just not me, but my family as well. The people were fantastic and it's something that, you know, you just can't equate to outside. Stand by for refueling. How long? Ten minutes. As supply officer, I'm responsible for the supply of equipment related items for the weapon systems and the marine engineering systems on board. It's the stepping stone towards high management positions in policy and resource development within the Fleet and Support Command and also within Navy Office and Defence Central. We've become involved in new acquisitions of ships, submarines and aircraft, developing the logistic package for them whilst remaining within the fiscal boundaries imposed by the government. We've had a far greater personnel management role than you'd encounter in most normal occupations because of the greater caring that the Navy has for its people. James Wright. The destroyer escort is used primarily in an anti-submarine warfare role. Anyone Today's Navy runs on technology. And the fuel of technology is education. The instructor officer in the Navy leaves civilian counterparts far behind in terms of teaching environment, variety and opportunity. Instructor officers join as undergraduates or graduates majoring in physics, computer sciences, mathematics or chemistry. The instructor branch also looks for graduates in oceanography, meteorology, operations research and educational administration. The reason we teach you financial accounting. The instructor officer initially attends two courses at HMAS Creswell before going to HMAS Cerberus for the application course. This course is done in three phases. The first covers job and training analysis and course design. The second is a basic electronics course. And the final phase is on-the-job training. From there, officers go to their first post, probably in Melbourne, Canberra or Sydney. Gentlemen, as we discussed, you must be fully prepared for a blind exit. And as you can see here, I have marked my parallel index of conspicuous points as we depart. Now, it's important to understand that as you are departing from camps, the directional light will be reversed to that of which you'd expect if entering. So, Andrew, what would you expect if you were to port of track as departing? What sort of light would you expect to see? Well, you'd expect to see a uh, green light. That's right. It's very important not to be confused at that point as you're making the exit and not the entry. The chance to specialise as a trained oceanographer or meteorologist is only part of the teaching career opportunities in the Navy. The wreck is um, reported to lie in this 5.8 metre area, and so we'll base our search on that. There's more than meets the eye to a career in the Royal Australian Navy.